Yeah, so Kelsey, you know, did a, a really great kind of tour of, you know, Spiffy and the capabilities that it, that, that it has and, and talk a little bit about the problems that, that we're trying to solve there. Um, you know, there is this other project, which is the sister project called Spire, that is the soft, a software implementation of Spiffy. Um, so what I'm here, what I'm here uh, right now to, to give is just an update on the Spiffy project alone. So not, not you know, um, too focused on Spire. Augustine will give an update on the Spire project next. Um, so this is more just about kind of like the Spiffy specifications and and uh, all the things going on uh, in the Spiffy community um, in particular. Uh, so as as uh, Umer mentioned, my name is Evan Gilman. I'm a, a maintainer on both the Spiffy and Spire projects. I've been around uh, those projects for quite some time now, almost four years. Um, so so effectively the beginning uh, of, of the projects. And uh, the first uh, update that I wanted to share with you in the context of Spiffy today is about the what we call the Technical Steering Committee or the TSC. Let me see if I can. Right. Um, so the TSC, as I mentioned, is, it stands for the Technical Steering Committee. And and uh, in the beginning, when we first started the project, the purpose of this group was really to kind of act as like a sounding board uh, to make sure that the folks who who were actually writing the code and and, and writing the specs. Uh, we're kind of pointed in the right direction and 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 you know rowing all in the right direction but also kind of going going towards this this strategic goal and um, to fulfill that 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 purpose the tsc was comprised of folks from the industry who have a lot of experience with this particular problem space and we've seen it firsthand and and, and um, understand what is what is needed in order to solve it well um, but over time the uh, steam gained in the project uh the contributors and everyone else kind of gained a lot of understanding of the problem space and, and uh, what works and what doesn't work. And so over time, uh, as this happened and adoption grew, you know, the, the, that original role of the TSC uh, became less important uh, and they became less engaged on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, still there, you know, it's still this group, this, this technical steering committee group is still kind of codified as in the project governance. Um, but in this state that they were in, um, where they weren't being relied on on so much, and the, and the purpose that they were originally trying to fulfill is, is not not as important as it used to be. Um, you know, we have to kind of ask at, at some point. You know, is this is this body still needed? Uh, and if it is still needed, then then uh, what is it needed for? Or what should the responsibilities of that group be? Um, you know, we have uh, some rough ideas of, of of what that group should be. You know, it's first of all, it's the only group with that kind of sits over the top of both the Spiffy project, the Spire project, and all the libraries and helpers and other kinds of things that fall under this big Spiffy umbrella. Um, and because of that, they're positioned really well uh, to give feedback to, to those individual projects, um, to coordinate across them, and also to do like gap recognition, you know, and, and things like that. Where, where, where are things not being filled that, that we need to fill? Um, so, you know, we, we think that this group is still valuable. Um, but in order for it to, to, to deliver that value that we think that it could deliver, we need to formalize a, a lot of these you know, responsibilities that I just described. And so what that really boils down to is that we're working on a new a charter for the TSC uh, to describe what those responsibilities are, what the goals of the group are, and, and, and really kind of write that down and, and formalize it as part of the project governance. Um, once that's done, we'll be in a position to evaluate the composition of the TSC. Uh, you know, so the, the group that we have serving on the TSC today is still the kind of original group um, from the very early days of Spiffy. Um, and once we have this new charter, you know, we'll be in a position to say, look, is this is this group composition still ideal? And and, and if not, what should it look like? Um, you know, should there be vendors as part of this group? Should there be users as part of this group? Both of those things or none of those things. Um, so all, all of that is, is being explored right now. And, and we're still we're we're kind of in the early, early stages of of getting all of this stuff codified uh, in order to push it through the, the, the existing TSC group has stepped up their meeting cadence. Uh, and we hope to have that, that work wrapped up by early next year. Next, we have a couple of uh, new SIGs and SIG stands for a special interest group. And these are like long lived groups of, of people who each, each group has their own kind of specific focus. Um, they don't necessarily have a goal you know, there's, it's not like a, like a, there's no real kind of like finite life cycle applied to it. 
it's, it's more to kind of handle the ongoing concerns and areas of focus in, in the SPIFI Inspire projects um, and, and, and the related sister projects. We have two new SIGs that have formed in the last six months. Um, first, we have one that's called SIG Community. And the focus of that SIG is uh, the nurture and growth of the SPIFI community, you know? So it's, it's everything from, you know, organizing events and webinars, educating, educating people about SPIFI Inspire, um, to, you know, the blog posts and Twitter accounts and all that kind of stuff and all, all the other outreach tools that we use to, to communicate with the community. Um, it's also about ensuring that the community continues to be warm and welcoming and, and, and that everyone feels, feels that, that they're welcome to be part of the Spiffy community, um, to point people in the right direction, to point newcomers in the right direction. And finally, to measure that community growth and, and, and overall health. Uh, so we meet that that SIG meets uh, once every two weeks. Um, I, I didn't mention, but if you'd like to get involved in any of this at the bottom here, I have the uh, link to the GitHub, the Spiffy GitHub repo. Uh, if you go there on the README, you'll find uh, information about about all of these uh, recurring calls, how to join them, the mailing lists, calendars, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you'd like to, to join the next community call, you can find information there. Uh, similarly, the TSD that I was just speaking about, those calls are also public and the call information can be found on the README there. Uh, next, we have a new SIG called SIG Spire, and that SIG is focused on primarily Spire development and not, not necessarily kind of like day-to-day -day stuff and, and not really kind of um, to be used as a help channel, more as kind of like a strategic channel a venue where we, we can discuss uh, various proposals to the Spire project coming in from the community to give a high bandwidth discussion between the maintainers and, and, and the Spire users um, to share thoughts and, and ideas about the roadmap and, and the things along those lines. Um, so that has been going on for a couple months now. It, it also meets uh, every two weeks and the call has, has so far been very well attended. Um, so these new these new SIGs, these two new SIGs uh, are joining an existing SIG called SIG specification or SIG spec for short. And that SIG is focused on the maintenance and, and shepherding of all the specifications themselves. Um, so including day-to-day -day maintenance uh, of, of, of the existing specs and also development of new and upcoming specs. Um, we meet generally bi-weekly and for the last year or so, that group has been working on federation. Um, and we are very, very, very close uh, to finishing that work. Um, there, there are a lot of questions about federation uh, in, in Kelsey's talk and uh, this is like a really important concept because what it does is it enables communication to happen across these different trust domains, this concept of different authorities or, or different sources of trust. Um, there's always going to be more than one and maybe not in the, in the same company or organization, but between companies, uh, or it can also be in, in the same company or organization. Um, how you do this is actually like loosely described in an existing specification, an existing uh, SPIFI specification called the trust domain and bundle specification. Uh, and Spire actually already implements uh, SPIFI federation. Uh, so you might be asking like, why do we need a new document for this? Uh, and the reason is because the existing definition um, that we have in the trust domain and bundle spec is not very strong. It, it, it likes the path and, and, and to how to accomplish it and is enough for someone to get going and, and get it working. Um, as I mentioned, Spire already has it, uh, but the language that is currently there is not strong enough to guarantee interoperability between different uh, Spiffy providers or different Spiffy implementations. Um, so that's why we're we're working on this new doc, which has much stronger language and and a lot more clarity and 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 detail about exactly how this should be accomplished, um, what is allowed and what is not allowed, um, with the goal there ultimately being to enable this this interop. Um, but we're going to talk more about how, how Federation actually works um, in a later talk today. Uh, so what's left in this work uh, so far is, you know, I, I would call the existing, like what we've got so far to be feature complete. It's been feature complete for quite some time. Um, what, what, we've, what we're working on there now is primarily like the structure of the document, uh, the clarity of the text, you know, making sure that, that this is not, you know, all the questions have been answered and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and so <clears throat> we're on kind of like this last push right now um, to, to get it out the door and get it done. And so we've stepped up the cadence of, of that call as well. We now meet weekly. Again, if you'd like to get involved in that work, um, 
that you can find the call information uh, at the GitHub repo. And uh, we hope to be done. We hope to be done with with the spec in, in fairly short order. And then looking forward, um, once that's completed out the door, uh, we have a couple things on on the radar for SIG spec. Um, we've received a lot of questions from the community about claims. Uh, Spiffy currently allows claims to be set on its SVIDs. And by allow, I mean, it doesn't really like forbid them. It also doesn't say that you have to use them and it also doesn't define them. Um, so what we're exploring now are, are, are use cases to try and figure out, you know, if that's good enough or not. You know, do, does Spiffy need to codify a claim definition at, at the spec level uh, for any reason? And if so, what does that mean? Um, for interoperability between trust domains and, and between different Spiffy implementations? Or is it okay to kind of just leave it to uh, uh, different implementations to do as, as they please? Next, there's a fairly strong desire for <laughs> what is loosely known as token 2.0. And, um, you know, if I were to describe this, it's, it's, it's basically what we're looking for is we're looking for something like a JOT we're looking for a security token that can be transmitted at layer seven at the application layer. Uh, so it can punch through proxies and things like that, uh, like, like Kelsey was talking about. Um, but we're looking for something with, with, uh, with better properties. You know? So I think JOT falls short in, in uh, two different ways right now. The first is that they're easily replayed. Uh, so somebody who sees a JOT can grab it copy it and, and, and stick it on a different request and replay it and, and act as if uh, they are the original caller. Um, we would like to prevent that uh, if at all possible. Right now we mitigate by having really short lifetimes so that they expire relatively quickly. Um, but you know we, we're exploring concepts around being able to bind a token to a particular request so that if it was replayed, it could only be replayed, replayed with the same request that it was originally issued against. Another thing that we're that we're looking at is how we can delegate signing of these tokens. So right now, in order to get a token, you have to go to a centralized authority to get one signed and for you. Um, this comes with performance implications. It comes with availability implications, and all, all of those things we manage and inspire, but it, it's not ideal. Um, so, you know, we're we're exploring methods and, and ways that we might be able to have those minting and signing operations be distributed such that we can get better better performance and availability properties out of it. Um, but all of that is, is pretty hypothetical at the moment. Um, you know, there's still a lot of, a lot of exploration uh, to be done there and, and we're not quite sure what that's gonna look like, but one thing we know is that there's a lot of interest on, on both within uh, Spiffy maintainership and from the community as well. And finally, maybe just speaking for myself uh, a little bit, I think we could take a, a short break. Um, the last one year of, of Federation work has been pretty tiring for, for us or for me in particular, I guess. And uh, so once uh, Federation is done, we're hoping to dial the cadence back a little bit uh, as we go into more of this kind of research and discovery mode of, of these different um, things that, that I've, I've spoken about here. Um, there's always going to be kind of ongoing uh, maintenance overhead associated with the existing specs. So of course we continue to meet for those things. Um, but the volume there is, is decidedly quite quite a bit less than uh, the volume when we're developing a new spec. So that's all I've got for um, Spiffy updates. So I'll stop and see if there are any questions about any of that. Yeah, um, I, I know we are a bit tight on time, Evan. So if are there any questions, uh, maybe you can take one. So there's one by Sunil. Evan, do you see it? What is the timeline for having Development work for Federation. Development work. Well, I, I, I mentioned that the Federation is actually already available in Spire. Um, and the implementation that Spire has is, is very, very, very similar to what the, the spec that we're working on now. And if you go and look at the existing uh, trust domain and bundle spec, you'll see that we actually talk about how Federation uh, uh, can be accomplished and we point you in the right direction. So this new spec is just kind of about crossing the T's and dotting the I's uh, and, and, you know, being really, really clear about what kinds of, what aspects of this are going to be required in order to get interoperability. Um, in terms of timeline as to so when that spec will be finished, it's hard for me to say. Um, like I said, we stepped up the cadence to, to try and get it out the door sooner rather than later, uh, but we are rolling into the holidays, um, you know, so it would be nice to see it uh, before the end of the year. Um, but 
we'll see. Um, in the meantime, I recommend you go read the trust domain and bundle spec. You can also read the, the federation spec that we're working on if you join the SIGSpec spec Google group. Uh, and you can also, uh, <clears throat> you can also go and check out the implementation that's Inspire and see how we've done it there.